On the Harvard main campus, there's this uh, beautiful neo-Gothic building called Memorial Hall, and it was built after the Civil War as a memorial to the Harvard grads who had fought and died for the Union side. Engraved in the walls are the names of all these Harvard alums who died. It turns out that there were a fair number of students who fought in the Civil War for the South Side, for the Confederacy, and their names are not anywhere recognized in Harvard. So this is really sort of an omission that most people don't even know. It's sort of covered over, um, and that's something that I wanted to highlight in the piece. When you walk into the hall, you see that the floor has an internal glow. You look a little bit closer and you see hints of text, and you can't quite read the text, but you see it sort of looks like names. As you walk across the floor, you start a process where this luminous surface blisters and opens up. And what you see is underneath information about these Confederates who have died. You see their date of graduation from Harvard. You see their date of death and the place they died. But instead of a name, you see a relationship. Often, we think about folks on the other side of a conflict as uh, evil, as we tend to demonize them. It's a very natural human thing to do. We want to think about the world in black and white and not in shades of gray because it makes us more comfortable with the decisions we make. And I think, though, that that doesn't allow us to grow and it keeps us stuck in this area of conflict. So what I'm trying to do by showing these relationships is to get you to think about relationships in your own life, to think about what would happen if my great uncle died? What would happen if my friend died? This skin that I'm simulating, the skin which is covering over these names in which you reveal by walking, it's actually based on a biological system. I like to use computers to simulate things that are organic because I'm fascinated by this idea that the computer, which is inherently something that's very deterministic and very inorganic, can create things that feel very organic to us. When you walk across the floor, the camera picks up your motions and sends that to a computer. The computer uses that to break open the skin and to see the names underneath, which are then projected back onto the floor. So it's kind of this loop. You walk, the camera picks you up, sends you to the computer, the computer adjusts the image, sends it to the projector, projects it back down. People are a fundamental part of the work. Somebody walking on the piece is an actor in this work I've choreographed. And even if they don't see what they're doing to the piece, somebody else does. So this person who's walking across becomes part of the piece for this other person. And that's as important as the person who's actually walking on the piece. One of the interesting comments I got about the piece is that folks who walk through there every day and might have been walking through there for the last eight years didn't even know what the hall was about. They just saw some names on the walls. They thought it was some kind of memorial to somebody. Many people thought it was a church. And that my piece not only brought up the memories of these Confederates who died, but also highlighted the memory of the Union folks who died. And so the piece actually brought up the whole memorial side to the building again. Sometimes when there's a wound that's healed over, it doesn't heal correctly, and you have to open it up, clean it out, for it to heal correctly and to move forward.